I'm gonna show you exactly how I set up my moto vlogging camera array thing, okay? A couple new parts here. I got a this brand new icon helmet here, Hero 4 Silver, a Cena S, and a couple other little random things you'll need. I'm gonna have a link, links for everything in the description you'll need to get all these parts. To start with, I'm gonna put this on. This is the Cena SMH 10 S. I like to do a lot of dual vlogging. Um, just in general, it's really nice to have. This is a really cool tool to have when you're out there trying to make videos. So we're gonna start with this thing. This is the unit itself. Really nice looking here. Uh, same as the one I had before where you have two buttons. This is pretty easy to use on the go. Nice low profile speakers here and the boom mic itself. Some more stuff down inside. When you're actually gonna put this on your helmet, you'll get these two kinds of uh, clamps here. This one is an actual clamping style right here that's sitting on the back of it. This will actually slip up, uh, it was on this side. It'll slip up between uh, the shield and the foam liner and it'll pinch down. Uh, I like this one. They also give you if you don't want to use that one, one of these, which is like a stick on one. Yeah, for sure. I think I'm gonna run with this clamp style one. Back these screws off that's come on here. Now, if yours is the kind with the boom mic already attached to it, this is kind of the time you're gonna to want to play with this thing uh, and see about where it needs to sit to get the boom mic where you want. Uh, in this case, since it's corded, uh, it's not as important. I'm gonna go ahead and pop out the cheek pad here. These things really just fit right in there. It's not that hard to get these in. You line these little tabs back up and we'll run these Allen keys in here. Before I tighten them up, we'll try to get this position exactly about where we want it there. That's, that should be good. It's right there where you grab it with your clutch in hand. That's the reason they put that on that side is your clutch hand is the hand that's easier to pull away and mess with these things. If you're worried about this hanging off the helmet a little bit here, these things are pretty beef. I've had uh, my last one on there for two, three years, it's been beat up, slammed into things. These are kind of a rubbery, hard plastic. They're they're meant for abuse. Part of the positioning of that right here was to get this wire really close to this seam right here. These need to run into the helmet. So we've got this as close as we can get it. We might have to trim a piece of the actual cheek pad. I'm gonna show you that now. The cheek pad has this sort of plastic ridge that runs around it. And we need this to have, a, it's gonna have to have a slit in it basically for the wires to tuck around it. Uh, before we set that up though, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get the wires that are going in towards the helmet. That'll give me a rough idea where the slit needs to be made. The liner is running right into it right here. This is the plastic rim here that's now being blocked by the set of wires. So what we're gonna do now, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna mark that spot right there. Don't be a moron and cut the wire doing this. Just cut the plastic rim. So there's the mark I made in it right there and I need to cut another slit right next to it. These don't have to be super big, but just enough you kind of just cut into it and you can kind of peel the plastic back that's what we're looking for right there just a little slit in there and when that's all tucked up in there the wire will run right through it you never even know it was there now i'm going to pull the entire liner out now time for some speakers so what you have is kind of like a, a vel velvet side on one side here and you can see it kind of sticks to that a little bit and the other side is an m3 adhesive so you need to figure out where this needs to sit um Typically, when you look at your cheek pad here, you know, this is inside against your face, like that, right? And you've got this little area right here they give you. If you see, there's enough room in there for that, almost perfectly. Uh, I've even seen some helmets out there where there's a groove in the, in the styrofoam. This one doesn't have that groove. Some have a groove to help <laughs> really line these things up. So what you want to do here I find it's easy since we know it's going to have to kind of go in that groove. That should give me enough room for my ears. Uh, I'm going to kind of half stick this back in there and see where that lines this up. And when I get it good, I'm going to peel the other side of this off. See, for right now, I'm actually just going to go ahead and stick this on there like that. I'm going to line it up. When I get it lined up, I'm going to peel the back, press it down. Should be good to go. Come in here. I'm going to find out where this lines up. I love trying to peel these M3 backings off. They're such I, mean, I guess it's good sticky stuff, but it's always so hard to get those off. I don't want the wires going all crazy, so what I like to do is put just a little bit of tape on things. Right. Just a small strip of tape, just to hold the wire kind of down, so it's not making you want to kill yourself in a little bit here when you're having to mess with other things. All right, where is the other speaker? Same as before.
Both speakers installed there. I'm gonna run this boom mic along the inner edge here, right through here. Velcro on the end here. Okay, they give you two of these. Kinda like I did before, I'm gonna line this up where I want it. I'm gonna pull this back sticky side off. All right. And from the outside, that's pretty clean. That's all you're seeing from the outside. It's just, uh, just that piece, small little bit of wiring in there. Doesn't really take too much away from the helmet. This is a really cool graphic. I hate to cover it up at all, but such is the way of things. And then from the inside here, you can just start to see the mic. Gotta make sure nothing goofy is touching up against your ears. I feel nothing against my ears right now. The mic, I have to bend this. It's a bendy mic, so you can move it around. It's not a big deal. Yeah, feels good. Look at this thing, by the way. All right, I'm gonna clean up the workstation here. They give you all these extras, so many things here, but let me just clean all this up and I'll get back with you guys. All right, next part here is uh, the GoPro itself, the GoPro. This is a GoPro Hero 4S. Uh, for what we do on YouTube for moto vlogging, I think the Hero 4S is more than adequate for the job. Um, you could go with a black, but I honestly really like having the LCD screen on the back. It's kind of cool to help set things up, and because it's a touch screen, God, it makes life easy when you have to, you know, format cards or change settings. Uh, settings I run, by the way, I run at 1080p. I like to run at 60 frames. Uh, in case you need slow mo, something's pretty nice. And uh, I run, I think I run Pro Two on Pro Tune, and I use GoPro's color mode. Uh, their vivid color setting, I guess. A few other things you'll need. This is a skeleton case well this is the yeah this is the skeleton case you can get a frame one that's even more exposed the key thing here is the hole in the side here that lets us run the audio now there's some guys out there that'll actually cut these things up or they'll, they'll dremel out holes i've done that before i'm kind of sloppy at it but uh it's up to you i've got this one back door on it right here i don't think i'm going to run it with this setup but this is the back door for en 187's uh kit which is actually running the other gopro right now i've got a, a big battery here set up running it. i'm going to do a chin mount here so one of the other things that you will need that doesn't come with is one of these connectors right here this is a just a one little connector and it doesn't it doesn't re-angle it because uh, we're going to be really simple it's going to be a single mount here and it's going to come up and it's going to sit right about here a lot of people run theirs low and even down low i'm not really sure why your line of sight is actually up here. You can have your camera up pretty high. And it's actually cool to have it up sitting about almost here because first of all, it's closer to your line of sight. Second of all, you can look down and actually see the red LEDs telling you it's on. I like to run the case on them. Some people like to go with the frame. One of the good things to get when you get one of these setups is uh, what I've got is where you have a handful. You can get like three little batteries in a double wall charger on Amazon for just a few bucks. I'll link that in with everything else. We'll have one that's a curved mount, one that's a flat mount. Obviously, this is a helmet, it's curved, so we will need the curved mount. This is something I was kind of worried about a little bit. It doesn't quite match up as well as I wanted. I mean, if it was to go like on the back or the side somewhere, it does a pretty good job of meeting that contour. But uh, right here on the very front, it's just not a lot of bend to it, but I know a secret to fix that. You want to go get some of this M3 tape that's just double-sided, just like this. Because what we're going to do, uh, you'll need it in general for some other things here later on, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to make two strips here on the side. That's going to help it make more contact surface. You're going to actually double layer it up. I've done this before. It's fine. It won't fall off. We're roughly laid over this plastic. It won't stick to this, this red plastic very well. It's the same stuff on here, so you can kind of use this as a guide. You'll we'll need some alcohol to clean the surface here. I'll go ahead and get that clean so it can be drying. When you do a front mount like this, and you're just you're only gonna have one access to adjust the camera, which is up and down, you're gonna be losing your this way and this way. Sounds like a big deal, but it's really not. These have got such a wide angle view. I run in super view anyway. You could like jack it up a good bit and you almost wouldn't even know. Excuse me. What's going on? Are you Jake the garden snake? Yeah, I am. I got some stickers if y'all want some. Hi, can you see me out here? That's what we're kind of working with there. See, I mean, I've done that, and if that makes sense to you, we're kind of giving a little bit more concave. It's still not a ton, but better than nothing. It'll give a little bit more stick. Dude, these GoPro mounts, though, they're so sticky that you don't have to get them perfect. They're, 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 they're very strong. It did work pretty good to fill in that gap a little bit better. A little bit of a groove there where it's not perfect, but that's where we filled it in a bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's such a clean setup because there's so little 
going on here. You want to be able to make sure you can arch it back pretty far. And I can arch this back way further than I'm probably going to need to. If you're a sport bike guy, it'll actually be probably something like that. If you ride motards and groms, it'll probably be more like this. You'll have to kind of see when you get onto your bike there. Now for your mic and cable. First of all, you'll need a mic adapter. You usually have to go with the GoPro one, which has got a long piece on the end like this, which means it hangs out the helmet way out here somewhere. You'll see a lot of these right angle ones on like Amazon, for instance, and it's a complete crapshoot whether they'll work or not. Uh, the reason why is there needs to be a chip in here that uh, trick tells the camera that you have a mic plugged in. Ian817 has a video actually telling you how to solder and add a connector to this. Um, myself, I that's I don't know about doing all that. For myself, I'm not don't think I'm skilled enough to try to break this open and put a little chip in here. Luckily, this one already has it in there. This is one I found on uh, on Amazon and it actually shows it. It says chips in there. I'm going to put a link to this exact one. I've tested it, it works. It also gives you stereo sound, which we are running a stereo mic. It doesn't really matter that we're running a stereo mic. It's just kind of nice that it is picking up off both speakers. Um, honestly, a lot of times I mono this speaker when I'm editing anyway, just in case for some weird things. This is inside your helmet. Stereo is weird, but this is just the mic I like to use. Speaking of the mics, this is the Sony mic that I like to use here. It's a little stereo mic. I'll put a link to this exact one again. Uh, one of the things you'll see on this thing, though, it comes with this little lapel clip thing, which is just going to be a pain in the ass and in the way. So you actually need to take this off. And the only way I know to take this off is to break it. So do it gently. By the way, don't cut this fucking wire. I tried to shorten one of these once before. There's actually a fiber optic wire in here that you cannot solder together. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> the next step is a little bit crazy. We need to actually get some of this fabric right here. This is another tip I learned from Ian187. We need to cover this mic in this fabric. And the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna cover the mic with just a couple of little patches of this. Then we're gonna cut out a matching sort of wrap that'll go around it and then we're gonna wrap this mic up. For the mic, this is straight up EN187's tip right here. We've made a little groove. This, this is, uh, again, this is something I learned all from him. So all credit goes to that dude for this next steps here. Now this fabric, you're going to go down to your local fabric store. You're going to find the closest thing you can find to something like this. And you're going to tell them, I want the minimal amount I can pay for. Because you have to get so much of this. This was over $2 and I've already cut out lots of strips of this covering lots of different mics and making different setups with this. So. Once you buy this, you basically have enough for life. And that's just step one. We still have to do one more thing to really try to make this thing soundproof. This is something that Ian doesn't do that I like to do. I'm actually gonna put some of the same material inside of here. So we'll have to take our mic, bend it out of the way. Luckily it just moves, no real problem here. See that's what we've done there. We've added this little bit of fluff right there to the inside. Now I need to trim some of this now. I already know some of this is just going to be right in my mouth the whole time. So I'm going to sort of pinch some of it up together and get my scissors here and trim some of this off. Now we need to set this inside there as well. See, this is always the hard thing is how do you actually make this mic now stay where it needs to stay inside the helmet. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to basically zip tie it or electrical tape it directly to this other mic right here. Still need a haircut. Oh and the camera died at some point. Sorry about that. But we did finish the helmet. You ready to see what it looks like because me it's a little bit different than you saw it last. Oh my god. Not a, not a mohawk. I think this thing looks sick. Anyway, here, let's actually show you what's going on here on the front. This is about where you, we, you missed off is when I was just tucking away that end wire here. So real quick, I'll just pop this off. The mic is now sitting up inside there against that foam and it's zip tied, the very small zip tie to the boom mic. Uh, that's what we've done here. We've got a little bit of this fluff here. There's no chin skirt. And then the wire to this microphone well, it runs back down behind the cheek pad, kind of up a little bit, another little piece of tape, then back down like this, just because it has to go somewhere inside the helmet. I've seen so many motor vloggers with just a, a big 
mess of wires hanging out. Don't do that. Now when it does come back up, um, when you do have to put a little bit of duct tape here. I mean, you don't have to. You can, you might be more clever and figure out another way to do this. I've even seen people do this. I'm not real huge of it. Uh, big fan of this, but you take this wire, you can actually kind of like mash it underneath this when you stick it down and it kind of holds it in place where you want it. Eh, not really my thing. Uh, one of the things you do see here is we've had, I've put tape right over where this vent hole is in the front, uh, which I won't be able to get to anyway when the camera's on there. And most motor vloggers just kind of, I think, uh, accept that you don't really get to use the front vent mounts anymore when you have a motor vlogging setup. The last thing you want is wind to come in there. You're doing everything you can to stop the sound of wind. So. <laughs> We have a little bit of tape here. Like I said, once the camera's on, you barely notice this, but the point is this gets this sitting over here in this position. Now when I go to put the actual camera on, um, just simply slides in here. And I've tightened these things down so much, by the way, now this doesn't really move around. So we take this, clip her down, yeah, there it goes. This plugs in right here on the side. Yep, okay, and then that's how it will look on there. It probably looks a little bit crooked right now because the helmet's slightly upwards because of the scene on the side. When I'm riding, I can just simply one tap it and a one button start. I'll show more about that when I'm actually out riding it. We'll give it a little demonstration. Let's see, there we go, it's on right now. Also, uh, just for the heck of it, I threw some of these Mohawk things. I've never done one of these on a helmet before, but I thought turning it this way with the feathers and the owl theme on the front looked pretty crazy. Plus, I was able to put these reflective stickers on here. Uh, it makes it a little bit safer than two. These things really pop at night when the light's hitting them. Crazy tight. I mean, look, here we are. It's not going to come off, dude. One button start. Do this on the road. It's not hard. And we're going. And I can see the red flashing light just right there. I don't know if you can see that. But, oh, yeah. I can see the red flashing light. I know the camera's running now. And this is just in my line of sight. This may appear like it's blocking my view, but it's not. Above the nose guard here, the camera just barely in my view. Just enough for me to see the corner and know that the actual camera's running. Well, we got the visor up. I've thrown my mini sun visor down here because uh, I can. This is an open bike with no wind protection. I just want to get this thing up to speed and show you what the audio would be like. Uh, remember, there's no chin guard, uh, chin skirt on this helmet. It's just that fuzz we put in there. And this is how well it works. This is what, um, this is what it's doing. And if we want to close the visor, now it should be even better. This is uh, this is the audio with the, vi the visor down. Can you hear me? I can show you the world. Indescribable feelings. I like this up because everything is contained in the helmet. There's no wires going to your jacket, no extra audio packs. I do have to sync between these two cameras, but I mean, that's, I don't have to do that. But I'm saying if I have to jump off the bike or run around, I have like a mobile recording studio attached to my face, and that is pretty cool. What do you guys think of the helmet out in the light? I know mohawks aren't everyone's thing, but I'm sorry, I think this thing looks fucking bitchin'. Just look at this thing. This thing's fucking cool, man. Now, I've been monoing the audio, but I'm gonna show you real quick. Let's go to stereo. This is stereo sound, and if you're using a stereo set of speakers right now, you may notice it's probably coming through one mic more than the other. I think I gave it a quick listen. I think it's doing the right mic a little bit more than the other. Again, this is a stereo mic. You don't have to use a stereo mic. I just know that this mic works really well because Ian 187's talked about it, a few other people have. It just happens to work well and it happens to be this stereo mic. Let's go back to mono. It's very easy in the editing program to just combine those two or make it mono or just pick one that you think that sounds better between the two speakers. If you have any questions, let me know. Links for everything will be in the description. I'll even put this in here because everybody asks about my phone every time. I'm doing this with the Hero 4. Um, like I said, you could do it with a black. Everything should work the same. You just won't have the LCD screen. You will have a few bit higher recording options. I would say be careful about going to a Hero 3 or 3 Plus. Um, the audio, the way it, it does stuff with the audio, just it's when you plug a mic into one of those ones, uh, they just don't work the same. They just don't make as good an audio. Just keep that in mind. And uh, look at my helmet! Ah!
This looks crazy looking, isn't it? All right, catch y'all later. Let's see if we can't pull something off. They're all headed to Dallas, and then they'll be back. Yeah, yeah. okay, so we'll be back a little bit. Is. All right. <laughs> cool. It's got the motor, people.